Well, hello everybody, it's Mike here with Hardware Canucks again, and it's been a month and a half since I've actually been in front of the camera, so I'm a little bit rusty because I've been taking care of the newest member of our team, and that would be Sophia, my new daughter. Anyways, what I wanted to do in this video is address the elephant in the room, and that is because up until this point, I reviewed 19 different low profile coolers, but there's been one thing that I've been missing in all of that, and that is how a basic 120 millimeter AIO compares to all of these low profile coolers that are really intent for the ITX market. The fact of the matter is that in the ITX market, even the smallest cases these days are compatible with 120 millimeters or even a little bit bigger AIO. So in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the best of the best low profile and ultra low profile coolers that I've looked at and compare them to one of the most popular AIOs out there. And that would be the Corsair H60. And look, one of the main benefits of water cooling is performance. Yet on the downside, AIOs tend to carry a premium over some, but not every air cooler out there. For example, the Corsair H60 I'm using for this video is one of the most popular all-in-ones, and it goes for about $70 these days, or maybe even a little bit less. That makes it pretty pricey when you consider some of my favorite low-profile coolers like the ID Cooling IS50X, Noctua L9 series, and Thermalrite AXP90 actually go for less than 45 bucks. On the other hand, depending on the region you're in, pricing for some of the best air coolers I've tested can be pretty daunting. For example, the L and Finn Black Ridge, one of my all-time faves, will run folks in North America anywhere between 65 bucks to 100 bucks, depending on the day, to be honest with you. Meanwhile, something like the Noctua L12 Ghost is already expensive at 75 bucks south of the border, while people in India end up paying, believe it or not, the equivalent of 100 to 125 bucks US for it. And look, air coolers have a bunch of other benefits too. First of all, they're simpler to install, provided you take my recommendations that we've gone through in the last couple of videos because they can actually be a pain in the ass to install too. They also take up a heck of a lot less space than your typical AIO. And also because they are less complicated, they require less maintenance and can have less things go wrong in the long run. But do you know what won't go wrong in the long run? And that is Fantex new cases. The all new G360A by Fantex, bringing updated design inside and out to refresh the P360A chassis with a legendary breathable, durable mesh front panel for improved cooling and that awesome illumination peeking through via the three DRGB front fans. The interior is now made to accommodate three 16mm radiators at the front and top, longer GPU support and user-friendly assembly. The dual color options are great for an all-white build with complementing cooler, fans and PSU, so check out the new Fantex G368 cases down below. Anyways, with that out of the way, what I wanted to do is I wanted to skip right ahead into what we're going to be testing here. Because for a lot of people, the complication of installation and all these other secondary aspects take a back seat to performance. So what are the coolers that we're actually gonna be comparing here directly to the H60? And like I mentioned before, these are some of the best of the best. First of all is the IS50X, which is right at the top of my list when it comes to providing a compact footprint, great pricing, and even better performance. By the way, this thing is gonna be replaced very, very soon with the IS55. So stay tuned for that video. And I'm also turning things up to 11 here by including a Nidec Gentle Typhoon and slapping that right to the heatsink because the 50X comes with longer mounting screws, so it's actually compatible with a standard thickness 120 millimeter fan. That brings it to just 65 millimeters high, so still in that low profile category, and it's priced to about 65 bucks in this modded config. And the other cooler that I really wanted to laser focus on here is this thing. This is the Noctua L12 Ghost, and if you watched our roundup video, you'll know that when it comes to packing, the most horsepower into the most compact form factor, this is actually one of the best. So the only thing that you need to remember about this is what I mentioned before. It is extremely, extremely expensive. It goes for almost the same price as this H60 and maybe even a little bit more in some certain regions. The last other cooler that I wanted to focus on is 
the Alpenfern Blackridge. Now you're gonna see right here, this is not its stock config, and there's a reason for that. Look, based on height alone, the Blackridge is one of the best ultra low profile coolers out there, period. When it comes to raw cooling potential though, it's not a chart topper, so not one of the best of the best overall. To get to that point, it needs a bit of help from a top mounted 120 millimeter fan. So guess what? The Gentle Typhoon makes a comeback here too. That brings it to about 72 millimeters high and a price that actually exceeds the H60. And that's something you have to take into account here is that if you're modding a lot of these low profile coolers, their prices do increase exponentially. But look, I'm still adding this to the chart because the numbers are, well, mind blowing. So those are some of the very best low profile coolers that I've chosen to include in this video. Now those are compatible with pretty much every single ITX case out there in the market. But I also wanted to cut this a little bit short and not go through our full methodology because we've gone through that numerous times. You can actually find that in its separate timestamp in this video right up here. Now, the other thing that you're going to understand if you look at that methodology is how important this one item is when it comes to any cooler that I test. It's not just necessarily how well these things perform from a temperature perspective, but also the temperatures each of them achieves at a given decibel level. So starting off with 65 watts, which is pretty standard CPU output for the ITX market, and right away it's obvious the thicker 120 millimeter fan on the IS50X brings it a small step up at lower noise levels. But that's nothing compared to the Blackridge with that same gentle Typhoon fan. Overlaying the H60 onto this shows how dominant an all-in-one liquid cooler can be on the cooling front at every single decibel level. Basically, it can get better results while operating quieter than any of these air coolers, except the Black Ridge with that 120 millimeter fan swap. And narrowing that down to 38 decibels while adding every single other low profile heatsink I've looked at so far, and it becomes even more obvious how an all-in-one liquid cooler can dominate. At 95 watts, on the other hand, the results pretty much mirror those from 60 watts, but the liquid cooler pulls even further ahead since it just has so much more thermal mass to work with. And that mass is critical for higher wattages like this. The only thing I wanted to mention here is the relatively small improvements we're seeing with the Gentle Typhoon mounted to the IS50X. Because its problem here is the exact opposite as the Black Ridge and the H60. While those have a ton of thermal mass, this, I mean, look at this thing. This really doesn't have much. I'll even put it next to the Black Ridge. If you look at the size of the heatsink relative to one another, this just is lacking thermal mass. So no matter how much airflow you throw at it, the amount of improvements it's gonna get are gonna be relatively minimal. And remember, the 95 watt test on a pretty hot running 5800X is where low profile coolers usually go to die. Most of these fail by posting results well above our 90 degree cutoff. And looking at the AIO's results, well, it's pretty obvious water cooling has massive, massive benefits if you plan on running higher wattage CPUs in your ITX build. Usually that would be that, but in this video, as with some of the others, I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into things that you guys are probably gonna be doing with your ITX build. And that's not running this full, massive, multi-core workload. It's actually gaming. As you can see right away, all the coolers are a lot closer together with the delta between the two stock heat sinks and the Corsair H60 being just three to six degrees at lower decibel levels. The interesting thing here is the Black Ridge in its overclock config with that single 120 millimeter fan is pretty dominant. And yet you have to remember it also takes up a ton of space relative to the other low profile coolers here. Things really do firm up at the top of the leaderboard when we're looking through that relatively narrow 38 decibel window again. I mean, the H60 is still well ahead in terms of raw cooling performance to water cool or not to water cool your ITX build. And that is probably gonna be what caused the most controversy in this conclusion. To me, what we have here is proof that all-in-one liquid coolers just have more thermal mass than something like a low profile heatsink. And if your build has the space for your ITX build, absolutely you should be looking into going with an AIO, especially if you have a higher wattage CPU running in there. On the other hand, all-in-one liquid coolers, they're absolutely not 
perfect. When it comes to almost everything else from ease of installation to long-term viability to a bunch of other areas, air coolers are probably the way a lot of you guys are gonna wanna go. Also the fact that a lot of ITX markets nowadays, yes, they do fit a larger all-in-one liquid cooler, but you're gonna be making sacrifices somewhere. Good example of that is GPU length and probably one of my favorite cases out there, and that's the PATX. But what I wanna know, I know it's gonna cause controversy, is also, are you guys in the air cooling crowd or the water cooling crowd, and why? Put that in the comment below. In my opinion, from where I'm standing from, there's absolutely no silver bullet. My heart is always gonna be with air cooling. I just feel like the water coolers, there's too many things that could potentially go wrong over the long run. On the other hand, if I was running that higher water CPU like I had said before, absolutely I would look to go into water cooling. So I guess that's pretty much it. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. Let us know in the comments below where you land and I'm gonna see you in the next one.